everyone, and welcome to the studios here at Culpeper Media Network. My name is Jonathan Krawchuk, station manager, and we want to welcome you to the Recreation Rundown. Today we're going to find out a little bit more about Parks and Rec, their facilities, their future, and all that they offer throughout the Culpeper community. Now, in the past couple shows, we've seen Andrew Hardy, we've seen Tabitha, uh, but we're going to see a fresh face today, and he's a kind gentleman, and we're happy to have him to start the show with, with us today. Uh, let's me introduce Joe Koontz. Joe, pleasure to see you, buddy. Good to be here. All right, so uh, Joe, um, for the folks, you may have seen the previous shows, you know, we talk about all that Parks and Rec does, um, and we've had some concentration lately on the sports complex for numerous reasons. New lights, new parking lot. I heard they were putting up, I think it was a small, tiny little building. Yeah, very small. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that is driving this um, are the sports that are played at the complex. And those sports are played on pretty much the most immaculate fields I think I've ever seen. Would you have something to do with that? A very small part of it. Uh, <laughs> We are proud of our fields. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, Bermuda grass, and it, it does. It takes um, it takes a process to uh, to keep them looking as well as they are. Well, as park superintendent, is that the correct your correct title? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, that pretty much falls under your pur purview, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I'm assuming it takes a team. So do me a favor. Uh, talk about talk a little bit about what a superintendent of parks for Culpeper County Parks and Recreation does and who you do it with. All right. Well, we do have a, a really good crew that uh, we have that we work with. Um, we take care of all the uh, parks in the county, plus the uh, sports complex, mm -hmm. which does have all those fields on it. Um, so between mowing and making sure everything is safe for the public, uh, that's that's kind of what we do. It sounds simple, but there's it's a whole not. lot more to it. Yeah. It's not. If anybody has uh, <laughs> put blade to grass, <laughs> they're like, oh, but then you actually, do you know how much acreage the that you guys take care of? It's got it's astronomical. I make mean, it, it Len is, Park alone. It is astronomical. Uh, that no, I don't know off the top of my more than head. ten. Yeah. I would and say, and it's probably better if you. <laughs> don't concentrate on acreage. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just number, a task at hand. Number can be daunting. Yeah. Um, so, with with all the uh, with all the facilities that you work with and manage, um, and in particular talking about the sports complex and the activity fields in in the county as well, uh, you guys are getting ready for I guess the end of season. Um, so, what does that entail, and what does that mean for the individuals in Culpeper? Well, we are. We've uh, implemented our fall shutdown, and uh, even as today, we're winterizing our irrigation systems. And uh, we have closed all of our playing fields, mm -hmm. which include all the baseball, softball, football, and the soccer. Um, so, we do encourage everybody to please stay off of the fields because uh, this is their time of rest. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bermuda grass is dormant and you can see that because that's that crazy brown that makes mm -hmm. you think it's dead and uh, if you happen to go out on the fields and cause any damage right now it cannot rebound from that damage so that's why it's extremely important for everybody to stay off of the fields uh, we do have a couple side practice fields that uh, we still allow people to go on so uh, we just wish for people to be respectful and and listen to the signs. And stay off the grass. Yeah, stay off the grass. <laughs> um, are those fields the ones, the practice fields that are open, or are they marked? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming when you pull up, I have seen a number of signs that say, you know, the field is closed yeah. today. They're the only ones you'll be able to tell because they're not signs that say they're open, but there's mm -hmm. no signs saying that they're closed. So uh, you understood. It, it's very easy to tell which ones are closed as well. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, and you know, we, we were talking we were talking before we got started, and I said, here's your opportunity to tell all these people in Culpeper what not to do on your beautiful fields. I mean, we, we know we don't, we certainly don't want to drive on them. Right. We totally um, don't want to do that. Actually, we, we would really like to not have any activity between walking, and even uh, we do have several people that like to turn their dogs loose and run on the fields, and uh, we really do not need any foot traffic on the fields. Uh, we have Lynn Park with, uh, that has their own fields there. We encourage you to go down and, and play mm -hmm. and get your activity in there with your dogs and uh, with whatever sport that you have. Um, it's just the, our sports fields, even though they get uh, 
a lot of action during mm -hmm. playing time. It's just they need a time of rest. And this is that time of rest. Yes, sir. All right, so as we move forward, obviously you said the fields are becoming dormant. Please stay off the grass and, and mind mind everything, please. Um, wh when, when do we start to see the fields pick back up to get activity? Uh, March. March? Uh, March is when opening day, um, the league start opening back up for practices. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you will be able to get back on the fields in March. All right. Well, Joe, I, I, I really... Um, I, I thank you for coming on. Is there anything maybe that I haven't asked you or that you want to say anything to the Culpeper community before we uh, part ways today? No, other than, you know, I love Culpeper. I've been here all my life. And uh, the things that we have going on in Parks and Rec between the field house and the lights and just all the activities, it's, it's an exciting time to yeah. be in, uh, in our field. Well, uh, I again... Uh, I would echo that sentiment. It is an exciting time, and I know you are extremely proud to be a part of it, and Absolutely. I know we are as well. Yeah. Joe, thank you for your time and what no. you do. We really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Well, again, thanks to Joe for joining us today, and we have more for you here on the Recreation Rundown. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're joined now by John Carter, a man whom I've just met as he walked in the studio today. Actually, that's a lie. John, it's great to have you in the studio. Good to see you, John. Um, so, first off, John, uh, you've been playing rugby for a number of years, um, but more recently you've been involved and created and pretty much started from ground up Culpeper Youth Rugby Club. Do me a favor, um, let's go all the way back. Uh, what was the impetus to start the club? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, just full disclosure, it, 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 was a, it was a collaboration. A lot of us came together, about four, five, six of us came together. We were uh, guys who have either played together or sometimes played against each other and, uh, and, and, and earned the respect that way. But um, a lot of us had kids that were growing up and uh, we, we, we knew that there were other youth rugby programs throughout uh, Virginia and we wanted to have one here in Culpeper. So um, we got together and kind of kind of kind of started this a, a while back. Um, we started our first focus was building a high school team. Mm -hmm. um, and we learned pretty quickly that those kids, once they graduate, you, you need to fill those shoes. And so over the past few years, we've been kind of expanding our program to revamp it with, uh, with, with a younger uh, entry point at, at tag rugby and things like that to kind of, kind of grassroots the program up. Well, uh, since the start a few years back, I would say your growth has been exponential. Uh, I would like to think that, the, uh, that you and your team, the amount of success is be well, it's because of you and your team, and you're doing something right. And it seems as rugby has been gaining popularity, uh, well, I would say in North America over the past few years, um, but really the the success of your organization, uh, you have to be pretty happy about it so far. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, we're seeing rugby grow. Um, you know, Washington, D.C. got a professional team a few years ago, Old Glory. Um, you know, we have colleges all around here that are competing, uh, Christendom. Uh, and, and Mary Washington kind of book in Culpeper, and they both have really competitive programs. Uh, the, uh, the the advent of, of summer uh, of Olympic sevens rugby has been a big boom for us too. Um, but for us as a local program, it's been fantastic because um, people are like, "Hey, that's something new. It's different." Or, or maybe the parents played overseas, or played in school, or played when they were kids, and uh, people have been really excited to have just a new opportunity to play, and that's what we want to do. Well, I, one of the things, uh, there may be a few people who are still unfamiliar with rugby. Uh, sometimes even, even I have to like concentrate for a few minutes, unless it's sevens. I really like watching sevens. That's great. Uh, what is, in your mind, the most appealing part of rugby, or maybe a selling point to individuals who have not yet had the opportunity to play or view the sport? Yeah, I, I, I think a couple of things. I think, I think the pace. Um, you, you know, you're, you're, you're constantly playing offense and defense, very similar to basketball. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of contact, as, as in American football. Um, and, and, and like I said, the pace of the game is, is very similar to soccer with onsides and offsides and, and, and going. No timeouts, things like that. Um, one of the things I always find really appealing is when you get a big lineman from football that comes out to try rugby and you go, I want you to run with this. I want you to <laughs> kick this. And he goes, great. And, they, and, and they're fantastic with it. You know? And it's a new opportunity for them, and they really seem to embrace it. So as we, as we talk about rugby and we're talking about the organization's growth, uh, talk to us about the individuals that you serve. Uh, from ages, ranges, and you also mentioned uh, the difference in play styles. You, uh, we've seen some, I've seen some posts with tag rugby, as you mentioned. Talk to us a little bit about uh, the, the groups, the ages that you work with. Sure, yeah. We, um, we usually start kids around six, five, six years old, depending on, on their comfort level. 
Um, we start them out in, in a, a, a tag rugby program. Um, it's basically two-hand touch. Um, they pass the ball backwards. With kids that, that age, no matter what sport they're playing, it's like herding cats, and it is fantastic to watch. <laughs> um, I, I, I know Andrew Hardy from Culpeper Parks and Rec really enjoyed it when he got to see those kids play uh, at, at our summer tournament. Um, and so we start the kids at that level. Um, for us, we found that they, they learn their fundamentals really well, passing, supporting, you know, being on sides and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of fun with it, and, and that, that pressure of, of making a tackle or absorbing a hit is, is, is not there. Um, as they get older, they, you know, as, as kids are, they, they, they want to get a little more in, in, intense and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, so around, around um, late elementary, early, early middle school, we start offering uh, tackle programs for both boys and girls. We've had a number of players that um, have, have played co-ed tackle with us, and we've had some girls that have gone on um, uh, to, to have really successful things uh, and, and opportunities with our program, uh, both boys and girls. Um, eventually, we're hoping these kids will, will, will grow up and, and, and we'll have a competitive high school team. Um, right now, our kids are, are primarily in, in, the, in the middle school and, and, and upper elementary school level okay. right now. So uh, if I'm a parent, and actually I want to I rewind just a moment. Uh, as we're sitting here on the Recreation Rundown, a program that we do with Culpeper County Parks and Recreation, and one of the things that we've talked about over the past uh, three episodes um, are the partnerships the, that Parks and Rec has developed over the years and cultivates on a daily basis. And here we are, Culpeper Youth Rugby, uh, another partnership. So talk to me about that partnership that you have and what is coming up because of that partnership. Yeah, it, it's been a tremendous partnership, um, uh, y you know, with, with obviously with Culpeper Parks and Recreation uh, and, and with other sports associations in town, uh, but particularly with, with, with Parks and Recreation, we've, we've had a really good opportunity to, to offer entry-level rugby experiences um, at, at little or no cost uh, to, to youth in our community. Um, back in November, we did a, we did a two-hour introduction to rugby uh, a program with them. Um, it was free. Uh, we had about 30 kids come out. They, they, they experienced what it was like to pass a rugby ball. I mean, you know, a lot of these kids have never seen a rugby ball, you know? I mean, the uh, first time I held one was when I was probably 17 or 18, you know? Really? So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's cool to give a kid that's, you know, six or seven years old a, a new tool and they get to use it and things like that. Um, uh, this, this winter, we're doing a, a, a four-week uh, similar program. It's, it's a skills development program where we're going to teach players how to pass, how to, how to support, and things like that. It'll be a little, little higher intensity. Um, we want those kids ready for that spring program that we're getting ready to offer. Uh, registration for that opens on January 7th online through Culpeper Parks and Recreation. Um, in addition to that, uh, they were a phenomenal partner. They actually helped us bring um, two state tournaments to Culpeper uh, this spring and this summer. Um, it, it, is, it is awesome to look out over that beautiful sports complex and see people playing, uh, whether it's soccer or, or football or any sport, it's great, but when it's a sport that you're really, really passionate about, yeah. it, it, it ups that intensity. Uh, it was also great to go out into the community after that and have people go, oh, I, I saw some kids, uh, some rugby players from Alexandria that were in here, or some, some parents from Richmond would stop by the winery, you know, and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So that's a really nice connection that you have in the community. Well, um, obviously, uh, the partnership is working on, on many fronts and still, uh, again, when is the registration open for the our winter classes? Our winter skills class uh, it will open on January 7th online uh, with Culpeper Parks and Recreation. We'll have two classes. They're going to take place on Tuesday nights. We'll have a uh, six, seven, eight, nine-year-old class for those little kids, and then we'll have a 10 and up for our, for our, for our older, you know, uh, older elementary and, and middle school players. Okay. And, uh, you, and if they want to find out more information on that, I'm sure, I'm sure you can visit uh, CulpeperRugby.com or you can also find us Culpeper Youth Rugby on, on, on Facebook as well. I was just about to plug this, the socials and the communication. But if, if I'm looking for information about rugby and Culpeper Rugby uh, in particular, I'm going to go to CulpeperRugby.com. That's right. There's a lot of information there. And as you mentioned, it's always nice to... Um, you know, somebody might not excel at a singular sport, but giving them the opportunity to try something, something new, something different, may just be the thing they're looking for. Yeah, it, it, it's great. I, I tell you, this off season, uh, we're in our off season right now, and, and it's been really rewarding for myself and other coaches uh, to walk around soccer games or, or baseball games or basketball or tennis and things like that, and go, "Oh, that kid played rugby with this. That kid played rugby." With this. And I like to think when we hand those players off, they're they're better athletes, mm -hmm. and when we get them back from other sports, sports they're better athletes too. I mean, I, you know, I was recently reading an article. Uh, a player from England, a young player who's really up and coming, and they asked him, you know, what would you tell future players? He said, play as many sports as possible. Yeah. And, and, and our Culpeper Parks and Recreation Department is really helping that with, with the expansion of, th of things at that facility. I'm really excited to see what we're going to be doing. 
Well, John, I appreciate you coming in today. Always a pleasure to see you. Great to see you, too. Uh, don't forget, folks, if you want more information, log on to CulpeperRugby.com, and you can find them on Facebook as well at Culpeper Youth Rugby. Again, thanks to John Carter for coming in, and uh, it's always fun to toss around the oddly shaped pigskin. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Thank you for having me today. I really appreciate it's a pleasure. it. pleasure. Folks, stay tuned. There's still more to come on this episode of The Recreation Rundown. All right, welcome back to the Recreation Rundown. Uh, joining me now is a young lady I've known for many years. <laughs> and one of the things that marks her and her entire family, not only how sweet they are, but also how creative and artistic they all are. So joining me now is Kelly Roswadowski from K-Art and Design. Kelly, pleasure to see you again. Good to see you, Johnny. <laughs> um, you know, over the years, I have seen you in many capacities. Uh, and each one, I would say, is encapsulated in making yourself a better person. Uh, I have seen you with kids in art classes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've seen you at a number of different art in installations. I've seen you do Zumba. I've seen you dance in the streets. I've seen <laughs> you just. True. I've seen you just have a, a fantastic time. But all in all, I think it's um, everything that you work with seems to make you a better person in general. I, I think I like just helping people do the things they really want to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this stuff are things where people are nervous to give it a try. So. If I can um, make them feel welcome and comfortable so that they feel like they're ready to take on dancing in the streets or <laughs> drawing in a sketchbook, then I'm really happy to do that. Well, um, now Kelly, you've, you've done a lot of work with Parks and Recreation, with K-Art Design over the mm -hmm. years. Uh, we were speaking with John Carter just a moment ago about the partnership that Culpeper Youth Rugby has with Parks and Rec. Yeah. And K-Art Design and you have, uh, K-Art Design you and uh, Culpeper County Parks and Rec have had a fantastic relationship over yeah. the years. Uh, do me a favor, kind of talk about how that started and all the offerings that you've worked in okay. or had your finger in with Parks and Rec. Um, well, Parks and Rec has been a wonderful partner for us because uh, it allows me just to focus on teaching. Mm -hmm. um, if I had to do all the back end registration and handle, you know, a snow day and and um, refunds and all of that. I would end up spending more time doing that and less time teaching. Um, so being able to offer classes with them, get the uh, get the word out there through the catalog and their social media and all of that um, means that I can focus on the part I'm most excited about, which is working with people. Um, so yeah, let's see, I guess it started, I've been teaching with them for over 10 years now. Wow. So it started out just teaching Zumba <laughs> in the community room and then um, branching out into other fitness formats. Um, and then uh, we teach art classes through them as well. We offer them at the studio, but everything runs through Parks and Rec, and that's been a great partnership. Well, and, and that kind of leads me to uh, some of the classes that we're talking about now. Mm -hmm. And since we had a nice little segue, I think we'll go ahead and talk about this. <laughs> okay. Uh, you I, what was the word you just used? Fitness... Um, Fitness formats? Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I had never heard that. That's great. All right. <laughs> uh, and so speaking of that, you uh, you teach yoga and Zumba. Yeah, uh, two very different things. <laughs> and, you know, I am, uh, I, as you can see, I'm intimately familiar oh, with both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for those not familiar, share me exactly what Zumba is. All right. So Zumba is a good time. Mm -hmm. um, I think Zumba actually trademarked uh, exercise in disguise. Um and, and that's really what it is. You come, you have a good time, the music starts playing, you can't help but want to move. Mm. And before you know it, you've exercised for an hour, but it hasn't felt the same as if you were on the treadmill, yeah. um, you know, all by yourself. You're with other people, you can hoot and holler, you, we throw some line dance in there. Um, yeah, it's just a really good time. And, I, and what I love about it is we can play with different um, international rhythms, familiar songs, not so familiar songs. Um, and everybody can exercise at their own pace. Yeah. So uh, I might have one person going all out, high impact, high knees, woo woo woo, and another person that's dancing real small um, and just having a good time, and everybody's getting something out of it. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it was the first uh, class that I um, got licensed to teach mm -hmm. because I just fell in love with the good time. <laughs> nice. I, I think more people are familiar with yoga. Yeah. Um, uh, for, the, for the classes, yeah, I think, I think yoga's kind of been popular for a little while. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Just a smidge. Um, but uh, talking about the classes, the Zumba and yoga, uh, are these for adults or do you teach different age 
Um, well, I've had multiple generations in the class. I have uh, some mothers and daughters that take the classes together now, husbands and wives, mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, always great too. I've got a pair of sisters that have been taking classes with me just forever. Um, so it's yeah, it's really flexible, and no matter what I'm teaching, uh, for me it's really key that the people feel comfortable and welcome. Mm -hmm. Um, because I know it takes some courage to put yourself out there. So when they come in, I want to make sure that they know <laughs> this is a safe place. We're going to yep. make sure you have a good time, that you don't hurt yourself, um, and that you leave feeling better than when you came in. <laughs> well, I mean, it sounds like I, I think you have a great philosophy, and that's probably why you've been such uh, <laughs> a great teacher for you know a decade almost. Well, and, well, and over a decade. they... Uh, I'll, I'll say the classes I teach for Parks and Rec in particular are in the evening, and sometimes it can be hard to get your energy going. But when the people come in, they're so happy to be there. It's an hour um, that nobody can bother them. Their cell phones are put away. Um, so they'll say, like, as far as the mental health <laughs> aspect of it, just having that break is, mm -hmm. um, is really important. So I'm proud of them for taking the time for themselves to, to follow through and actually come and do it. But as soon as the music starts and they're smiling, no matter how tired I am, we're going to have a good time because um, they help get me going, too. So it, it's, it's just been um, positive all around. Feeding off each other's energy, making having absolutely, a bit of fun. absolutely, and as some of the people have just you know we we start class at like six fifteen because some of them have long commutes back from jobs yeah. in Northern Virginia, and you can tell like they've had a rough drive and their shoulders are <laughs> up here, and once the music starts. They, they find their, their happy place again. <laughs> well, I mean, you've pretty much convinced me that I need to start doing either Zumba <laughs> or yoga. Probably Zumba because I think that's, uh, that's a little more my, my speed. Well, I will say my yoga class is as lighthearted as my Zumba class. It's not as high energy, of course. Well, it's you know, different... you've gotta, got to study yourself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I'm still me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it is not the most serious yoga class you've ever <laughs> taken. You know. Well, I, so if I'm interested, uh, you mentioned when we were talking before we jumped on camera that they are four-week sessions, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's um, one of the things I really like about being able to teach through Parks and Rec, because I also teach at Powell Wellness Center, um, is the fact that you don't need to invest in a membership. It's mm -hmm. not as big of a commitment. So I get a lot of people that are just trying something out. Yeah. So it's a four-week commitment. Uh, classes are $35 for the four weeks. And if you don't like it, y you know, you've, it's only $35. Um, so yeah, they're, uh, they're always at the same time. Um, and uh, people check in on each other if they don't make it in. Like they're, they're <laughs> it becomes a little social yeah. group too. Um, but yeah, it's not a it's not a huge commitment. <laughs> so when would I be able to sign up for the next session? The next session. Registration's open now for the January session. So for the people looking for their New Year's resolutions, if they wanted to try something new or even give it as a gift to somebody, mm -hmm. you could sign them up now and not tell them till January. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise, <laughs> we're going to Zumba together. All right, so the January session is coming up and I'm assuming that we would probably go to uh, copeperrecreation.com mm -hmm. and sign up for those classes. Yep, yep, and the course catalog will be coming out for um, that set of classes. I think the January classes were already listed in the fall catalog, but okay. the winter one that's out to print now will be going in the mail in January. So people will see that too. Okay. Um, but the January ones are open now. Okay. So as we talk about exercising our bodies, uh, we also need to exercise our creative minds. Oh, good segue. You like that? <laughs> yeah. We're working on it for like 17 <laughs> seconds. Took a while. Uh, but your are jam classes. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I, I believe we had the opportunity to kind of uh, stand in the corner in one of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, but do me a favor, talk to me about what you do during an art jam class, uh, who it's catered for, yeah. and how much fun it is. <laughs> art jam grew out of my desire to walk away from the computer a little bit and not always be uh, working in the graphic design mm -hmm. um, realm <laughs> and get my hands dirty again and how better to do that than to work with kids. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the art jam classes, um, the ones I have coming up are mostly for homeschooling families. So they're during the week, uh, although during uh, pandemic virtual school, I had some kids that were uh, not homeschooled, but virtual, mm -hmm. that were still able to take the classes. Yeah. Um, and I, for a while, I was just offering them through Zoom, which I wasn't sure how that was going to go. You know, how can you help kids with their artwork if you can't see what they're doing? Yeah. But um, they were so comfortable 
with Zoom that they made the transition easier for me. Like they had already adapted to this and like, it's hey, Miss Kelly. It's amazing how quickly kids have adapted <laughs> to this. Yeah, oh yeah, they're like hitting the thumbs up for each other and sound effects, doing all kinds of things. Um, but it required a lot more planning on the front end for the classes because uh, the way the virtual classes work, you would come to the studio and pick up your supplies ahead of time. So you'd have a bag, a little kit, with an envelope for each week with all your materials and everything you would need. And then we would open them up and it's like Christmas each class. So, oh, what would we get this week? And then we'd do projects with them. Um, I tend to base each lesson on a different artist so we can work a little art history in there or even current working artists, sketchbook artists, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, but it's, it's very flexible again. It's all about meeting the person where they are, whether it's an exercise class or an art class. Um, so that they feel comfortable enough to try mm -hmm. and to have fun so that they'll stick with it. Well, the art gym, the art gym class is coming up. You mentioned mm -hmm. the virtual component that you did, did before. Will yeah. these be in studio? I've offered both uh, starting this fall. Mm -hmm. We did a session. I do a session online in the morning, and then after that was done, wrap everything up, and then I'd have another group coming into the studio, same lesson. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. I had about the same amount signed up for both. We were full for the in-person class because uh, we only take eight in the studio so I can spread people out a little bit. They had all their own supplies so we didn't have to worry about um, sharing of supplies and things like that. But also I've noticed when they're their own supplies, they take really good care of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that worked out well. Um, but yeah, so we're going to offer both again. Nice. I know for some of the homeschooling families in particular, if they have only one child that wants to take the class, it's easier for them to maybe do a virtual class so they don't have to bring everybody into yeah. town just for that one hour. Um, so some really liked the virtual. We also had a boy that went to the beach and he took all of his stuff with him and could still take class and he got to show us the beach from his laptop and everything. Yeah, I make everyone jealous. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it, thanks so much. And then for if a kid was sick in this class, then I had a recording from the mm -hmm. Zoom class that I could share that they could use as like their makeup lesson. So that flexibility actually worked out to be a really positive thing. Oh, wonderful. So the next session of Art Jam is coming up uh, just in February, I think it is? Yeah, yeah, beginning of February, it's gonna be called The Art of Play, and Art we're gonna play. focus on um, drawing games, making games, things that we can do together. Um, one of their favorite lessons in the last session, we did a session on sketchbooks and we did a lesson on Jim Henson. And we played a game um, I made up called Roll a Muppet. <laughs> so we'd roll the dice and based on what you rolled, that was like the shape of the head or which eyes you got nice. or which nose you got and so on and so forth. Um, and they could have played that all day. Like I had to, Say, okay, guys. Ooh. Yeah, we got to wrap it up. <laughs> Our time is short. And we actually had to start the next lesson by playing Roll em Up It again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, again, that's just a testament to, obviously, you've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and some of the things you mentioned in our discussion, you know, you want to make everybody comfortable. Yeah. And a great get way for, for them to try something new mm -hmm. is to make them feel comfortable. And, you yeah. know, I, I think you do a great job at that. Thank you. And I appreciate you making me feel comfortable doing this because I am not comfortable in front of a camera at all. I, I don't know. Are there cameras here? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, uh, uh, Kelly, again, I want, to, I want to thank you for all the work that you uh, that you have done with Parks and Rec. Your great partnership Thanks, lasting quite a long time. Yeah, it's and been if, great. You know, if folks actually want to see some of your work, didn't you design the answer <laughs> for the quarterly coming out? Yeah, it's. Uh, it was funny because I've been wanting to do that project for a really long time. Um, and I had talked to Debbie Hoffman because mm -hmm. she, she's always designed that section. And um, and when I finally got to do it, the first issue didn't get to go to print because COVID hit yeah. just at that time. Um, but I got a, the nicest note from Debbie saying, oh, it looks wonderful. I can't wait <laughs> until we can do this again. Uh, so the fall issue went to print and this winter one's at the printer now. So you guys will get to see that out in the mail and it'll be a great way to get the word out. And a great way to figure out all the classes that you're teaching coming up. Yeah, I get a sneak peek at all of it. I'm going <laughs> to sign my mom up for basket weaving. <laughs> there we go. All right, well, again, Kelly, great to see you as Thank always. You, Johnny. <laughs> all right, again, we still have more to come on this episode of the Recreation Rundown. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we finish off this episode of the Recreation Rundown, I would be foolish if I wasn't going to welcome Andrew Hardy, Director of Culpeper Parks and Recreation. <laughs> Andrew, how the heck are you? Doing good, John. Michelle? Uh, you know what? I'm doing okay. And I tell you what, I, uh, I am excited yet again. Every single time 
that we have the opportunity to do the recreation rundown and learn about parks and recreation. It opens my mind up. It, it, it just it blows my mind. The partnerships and everything you guys have going on. Uh, every single time we do it, we learn something new, and I hope the I hope the persons watching do as well. Mm. Uh, you got to be pretty proud with who we had today yeah. and what's going on with you guys so far. Yeah, you had some absolutely amazing guests between John Carter and the rugby program and what they bring, and Kelly with the creativity of her arts and crafts classes and the support that she provides us with the quarterly and then the fitness programs. The two of them, you can honestly say, are staples yeah. for our program delivery services. You're really, really fortunate. And you know, to remind all the you know viewers out there, registration is gonna open up on January the 7th online, in person, Monday, January the 10th. So not only check out their programs, but all the other great and amazing programs that we've got going on. I, and they're really, I, the, uh, the, the newsletter is going to be coming out soon and mm -hmm. folks will see uh, exactly the treasure trove of offerings that Parks and Rec <laughs> offers. Uh, but also uh, we can steer them towards CulpeperRecreation.com. Mm -hmm. All the information is there and it's continuously updated. Mm -hmm. You guys are also on Facebook by searching Culpeper County uh, Parks and Recreation. That's correct. And, uh, well, yeah, if I wanted to email you, it would be parks at culpepercounty.gov. That's right. Email, right. social media, and website. We're available for anybody that's looking for us. More importantly, I want to know how to get a hold of you directly. I know it's 727-3412. What is your extension? To be honest, I don't know my extension, <laughs> so I would recommend that everybody just check out the phone tree. Tabitha's at five. And go from there. Yeah, so Tabitha's five. So if you've got program facility questions, she's the best contact for that. But for me, just check out the phone tree. I think I'm seven, though. I think you are. I think I'm seven. I think you are. I'm like, does he even work there? <laughs> oh, yeah, extension seven. Okay, fantastic. All right, so um, we've talked a lot about the programs. I know folks are interested to see what's coming down the pipeline. Uh, the past month has been... Uh, you know, we, we've spoken a couple of times uh, on and off camera about uh, all the great things that's going on that are going on with Parks and Rec. Namely, want to talk about, I mean, we just, you just had huge news, mm -hmm. huge development for the Culpeper community, especially for Parks and Recreation, right. is the groundbreaking and ensuing construction, actually mm -hmm. groundbreaking for the ceremony, and they were breaking ground <laughs> behind us, which was fantastic. Yeah. The field house coming, uh, you have to be extremely over the moon for that. I think it's just not only me, it's our entire community, yeah. the board, yourself. We did just do the groundbreaking on Wednesday, November the 17th. And to say that we were doing the groundbreaking is true because it was literally going on right behind us and you could barely hear some of the speakers <laughs> over the earthworks being done. But what we're humbly asking folks is for them just to follow us on Facebook because we've got some drone footage out there. We've got some photography that we want people to kind of watch the facility grow mm -hmm. and progress so that when it does open the doors, they feel like they were a part of it. And we're super excited because the fall of 2022, we're gonna have the doors open, welcome the community, and really step forward with Parks and Recreation, which is great. Now, we, uh, we can and probably will spend an entire program speaking of just the field house, mm -hmm. uh, but I want to allude to something that you were saying off camera just a few moments ago okay. when, when, Kelly, well, when Kelly and you were talking. Okay. And it's just one facet of the ability to work with staff, um, te uh, I'm sorry, staff and individuals who are teaching the classes, the participants of the classes. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned kind of sometimes you're, you're sitting in an office, okay, I gotta go have a meeting. Yeah. I gotta go drive, you know, to Len Park and have that meeting, mm -hmm. as opposed to going down the hallway right. in the new facility. And that's really just one of the <laughs> many advantages to this that this building will bring. Yeah, I mean, we focused a lot on the gymnasium and the youth sports component, but part of Parks and Recreation, and really the root of it, is the connection with our participants, our parents, as a staff and a team. And right now, that's what this facility is really gonna offer. We're gonna be able to connect with the community, really be a service-oriented department for them. And if you wanted to step across the hall to check on you know, Kelly with Zumba, yeah. or her doing an arts and crafts class, or John Carter doing a clinic in the gym, you're not having to jump in a car, drive 15 minutes to Lynn Park or another location. You can greet all the participants as they come in. This facility is gonna open up so many doors for us and our citizens, 
that you know the opportunities are going to be endless for us. I, I like it, and um, as you mentioned before, we want we want folks to. Uh, take a part in the process. Mm -hmm. And again, following you on Facebook, easiest way is to search Culpeper County Parks and Recreation. Right. Um, and then with the field house, we also spoke about another upgrade. I think the last time we filmed, it was immediately after the board meeting where you mm -hmm. got approval for the lights in the parking lot. Right. Um, and we were talking before the show and you were already talking that they have marked the locations. They're ready to rock on these lights. Yeah, Musco was actually out there yesterday battling the 32 degree weather, <laughs> marked all 44 light poles for softball, baseball, football, and soccer. So they are set, they're working on the engineering plans, they've already ordered the bases and the towers, and we're looking at construction, or actually the installation for softball and baseball to start first of the year around January. So it's exciting that you know, what, two, three weeks ago, we were talking about the approval process, and now we've already transitioned to the installation process. It's a, it's a very quick jump, and I, mm -hmm. I, know you're, I know you're happy things are moving so quickly. We are. And I know that uh, when March rolls around I, and the fields open back up, I learned that because, you know, Joe was here earlier, yeah. um, that it's going to, it's really going to change everything. Yeah. I mean, with Joe, you know, he's done a fabulous job. He was another great guest, you know, earlier trying to educate the public on the park services role within Parks and Rec. Because those guys, um, a lot of folks don't see them because, you know, they're out yeah. early in the morning and they're gone around, you know, mid-afternoon. But they're instrumental. You know, and Joe may not have touched on it, but it's not only the athletic fields, you know, the trail systems that are at Lynn Park and Spillman, mm -hmm. the disc golf course, the pollinator gardens, anything that you see that's our green spaces and parks, it's Joe and his team that are maintaining it. And I'll be honest, I think regionally we have some of the best parks and I would stack the disc golf course in Spillman, Lynn Park, the Culpeper Sports Complex, about any community's facilities. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's great when, we, when we're doing these shows, and here we are on episode, what, four, I think? Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I have a, such a good time, I just, I just don't count. We just talk. <laughs> um, it was funny, when we were talking with the disc golf, uh, we had the uh, Spillman Disc Golf Club mm -hmm. chairman in, and he said, one of the things I love about Spillman and disc golf, it always is immaculate. They yep. mow it, they keep it nice and trim, it's beautiful to play. And then here we are sitting with Joe this morning and you're talking about it as well. Right. Uh, it's a great example of, I think people realizing, you know, they're beginning to realize more and more what Parks and Rec does and all the cogs mm -hmm. in the wheel. And I think it's not only our citizens, it's folks outside of Culpeper. Yeah. Because that's really what Parks and Rec's about as well. It's bringing people into your community. Mm -hmm. And with Spillman, I mean, that really is a hidden gem up there between the course, the pavilion, the multi-use soccer field that's right there as well. That the complex does get a lot of attention, yeah. you know, rightfully so, because we have so many users that go there. But our parks are so versatile that whether you're looking at a trail, walking experience at Lynn along Mountain yeah. Run, you can get it, disc golf, you can get it, or just having a nice quiet picnic in one of the small pavilions at our parks. We pride ourselves in being able to offer something for everybody at all of our facilities. And you know what a great segue because mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that people are trying new, mm -hmm. whether it be rugby or Zumba <laughs> or even pickleball. Which right. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I'm a neophyte. Again, we were talking off camera. Somebody described it as a smaller version of tennis. I described it as a larger version of ping pong. So either way, it's apparently very fun and I'm looking forward to trying it. However, I would like to see a new group of pickleball courts. Could you do that? Yeah, it's crazy when you're talking about the field house, you're talking about the lights, all the other things going on in Parks and Rec yeah. right now too because we just acquired officially Mountain Run Lake Park from the town mm -hmm. and part of the improvements that we're doing on that site is we're actually going to be installing a two by two pickleball court on the property and again it could be the first public facility of the kind and i'll be honest too i don't know pickleball i didn't grow up playing it we'll, we'll figure uh, it out but i'll get out there and i hear the term is dinking and i'll dink with you you know every now and again to get the ball moving but within that property too we're hoping to be able to make it a crown jewel for the county as well to serve the residents just like the other properties but again first public facilities within the community mm -hmm. will be right there and i know that there's a large population of pickleball players that are excited about that because many have had to go outside yeah. of the county to participate and play 
Well, and, and going back, uh, going back to what you were talking about, I mean, yes, the pickleball is a great uh, advantage to have here locally. Mm -hmm. It certainly is, uh, and we know there's more to come on that route, which we'll talk about in future shows. Right. Uh, but I want to go back to um, the big thing that we we mentioned during that conversation is the fact that Mountain Run Lake Park has been taken uh, is now in the hands of the county. Correct. Uh, from the town of Culpeper. Explain to me what that means to you, or what that means also to you know the average Joe. Uh, I think it's. Um just the county acquiring another green space mm -hmm. that we have a vested interest in evaluating and adding amenities to because that property is outside of the town limits um, i know county residents frequent it quite often so i think looking to the future it's going to be an opportunity for our residents to get additional amenities within that area and be able to enjoy a green space that we're gonna to try to manicure and maintain as well as the rest of our other properties. Well, if the rest of the other properties are any, any indication, the uh, the beautification will continue mm -hmm. at Mount Run Lake Park. Yep. All right, so Andrew, we, we've, had a, we've had a great program today. We've talked a lot. Uh, we got a chance to speak with Joe, Park Superintendent, doing amazing work with his team. Uh, Kelly and John doing incredible work with their partnerships with Parks and Rec and their uh, their opportunities for the community, not only youth, but also adults. Mm -hmm. And we, here we are talking with you about the amazing future coming up. I mean, literally, <laughs> parks and recreation in the next year is going to completely change for Culpeper County. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know you and your team have done fantastic work. There's so much to come. I, 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 I'm looking forward to our next episode because you and I could sit here and we could talk uh, and talk more and more and more about what's coming down the pipeline. But we got to save it for another show. Well, we are going to be doing another show because remember, tomorrow we got the video on site with Gary I, and John wrong. Egerton. You're not wrong. And I know Chairman Gary Deal is going to be over the moon yeah. having the opportunity to be there filming tomorrow. John Egerton, you know, he's been instrumental in this. But I have to give all the credit to everybody else. You know, our department, we're playing our role. Mm -hmm. But if it wasn't for, for folks like you, the volunteers, the residents, the businesses that are stepping up, to help us do this mission and vision, you know, we wouldn't be a fraction of what we are. I mean, the leagues are out there. I mean, John, you know, he has so much passion for rugby. You heard it in yeah. his voice right here. We are here as a resource for him. And I know whatever we can do to support him and many others, that's what we want to be about. So thank them too, because they are an outstanding group to work with. Well, we will do just that and continue to do so thank you. Throughout, uh, throughout the many years where these offerings are made to Culpeper County. Uh, the citizens are extremely fortunate to have an organization like Culpeper County Parks and Rec and the team surrounding you. You guys are doing a great job. Thank you, John. All right, well, listen, we had a great talk today, yes, but we have a lot more coming down the pipeline. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, again, if you want to learn more about Culpeper County Parks and Recreation, all the offerings that they have, log on to CulpeperRecreation.com. If you are a Facebook user, you can just search Culpeper County Parks and Recreation. And they'll be pulled right up. Uh, you can also give them a call, 727-3412. Andrew's, Andrew's extension is number seven. Uh, Tabitha's is number five. Hopefully, we'll see her on the next episode. Well, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to check that website and find out more information about all the offerings coming up, not only through uh, December, but January on into the coming months. Don't forget, registration for uh, the next group of activities starts January 7th. That's online and in person on January 10th. So, folks... We have a lot of stuff to do with Culpeper County Parks and Recreation, and every opportunity for us is out there. Until we see you at one of those many opportunities throughout Culpeper, you have yourselves a great day and a better tomorrow. <laughs>